Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about layers. Now I'm only going to give you an introduction to layers because this is a huge subject. Um, so initially I'm just going to show you what layers can do and how you can use them. Okay, just, just open up a new document. Doesn't matter what size it is. Right, so we've just got one image here. Okay, it's just a white image, there's nothing on it, it's blank. But it is an image in a layer, and to prove that, this is our Layers palette down here. Now if you haven't got your Layers palette visible, go to Windows, and then click on Layers, just here. Make sure that's ticked, and if it's not visible, it will appear down here. Okay, let's drag our Layers palette out, let's make it a bit bigger. Oops, let's make it smaller. Okay, right. So we've only got one layer here, so nothing very special about that. Now if you think of layers as being layers of paper um, stacked on top of each other, tracing paper that you can see through, you'll have a pretty good understanding of it. And as you stack layers on top of each other, so you can draw on each of these different pieces of um, tracing paper and you can actually look through them all together to see the whole image, or you can take various layers out to remove certain items. So right, we're going to draw on this item. Okay, there's a circle, and we'll fill that circle with look. Okay, now that's our background image. Now, say we wanted to create another image over the top of this, but we didn't want to destroy the bottom one entirely. We can have another shape, we'll put it on a different layer. So we just click on this, at the bottom of the layers panel here, you'll see there's these various icons. And there's one here for a new page or a new layer. And as you hold your, your mouse over it, You'll see it says create new layer. Click on that and we get this blank layer above it. It's completely transparent, shown by the fact you can see the checkerboards behind it. If ever you see that it, that patterning, that means that area is transparent. So if I have another shape and I fill it in with another colour, let's, let's go for this red. And we'll, come on. There you go. This is not playing ball with me at the moment. The control D, that'll deselect it. Okay, now we can see we've got this red square and a blue circle. And they look like they're all one image, but they're not. Actually, this red square is on a different layer, so the blue circle is still there. And I can use the move tool to drag it around and put it where I want. Right, so let's try doing something else. We'll have a nice big black squiggly line. Now I've put that on the same layer as the red square. So now if I turn the red square layer off it takes off both of them. But if similarly if I move it, it moves the whole lot. So I've actually changed my red square layer and I can't do anything about moving that black line in re relation to the red square because those two are fused together. So if I go back a step on my history palette, a couple of steps, create a new layer, and do the, the black line again. Now I can use the turn the black line off on and off individually, and the red square off in, individually, and I can move them individually. I can also fade them so they go tra semi-transparent. Or I can add effects to them, like beveling and embossing. Let's drag that one a bit. Like so. You can do loads of things with layers. The other thing I can do is I can change their order. Let's put that back up. So up to um, full strength so you can see it easy. And I can put this black line behind the red square. Just like that. But whatever's on the background will stay on the background. So I can't move that blue circle because I put it on the background layer. But if I put that blue circle on a separate layer, I'd be able to move the blue circle as well. So layers are very versatile in that respect. And there's tons of other things you can do with layers. But when you finish messing around with your image, whatever it might be, you can't, you can either, if you want to save the layers, you've got to save it as a Photoshop file or a PSD file or a TIFF file. And these are big files because there's several different images. It's being saved as 
multiple layers. The best way to save it is once you've finished all your editing and you know you're not going to do anything more to it, is just to flatten the layers, flatten the image and make it one. And now you can just save it as an ordinary JPEG image or any format you want, but it would be a lot smaller image. Okay, so let's get rid of this, this one, we don't want this one. And let's open that one I worked on, I've worked on before. Uh, which is this one. It'll take a while to open it because it's a very big file, loads of layers on this one. Right, okay, here we can see the various layers that I've got my layers palette and you can see there's several layers here and each of these layers has something different on this layer here is the border and you see if I toggle it on and off it takes the border on and off there's another layer here called border which is actually this white mat that I've put around and I showed you how to create one of these in an earlier tutorial so if I turn that one on and off you see the white mat going on and off there's this, the writing, the text here, is on another layer. And when you create text, it will automatically go on its own layer um, initially. And my signature is here. And my various effects that make up, make the image or photograph look more like a painting are there. And as you see, as before, if I change all these things around, if I bring this border on top of the text, you see now my text has disappeared behind the border. Or if I move my text around, I can even, let's put that one back, I can even invert things. So if I want this border inverted somehow, I can go File, no, Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Yeah, doesn't look as good that way. Of course, there are many other aspects of layers that I haven't discussed here, such as the blending modes, the various effects, and the adjustment layers, to name a few. But I will be discussing those in other tutorials, some of which you can already find on my website, and the details of this are at the end of this video. But the best part about layers is that it doesn't matter what you do on any of these layers, whatever changes you make, your background image always remains untouched until such time as you flatten the image down. So here is the original image here, completely as it was as it came out of the camera. No changes have, been, have had any effects on this. And no changes will have any effects on it until such time as I flatten this image, flatten all these layers down and save it. And only then have the changes really made an effect. And that's it. For more tips and tutorials on using Photoshop, why not visit my website at www.sally-jane.co.uk.